Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm back with the devil, and yeah, she's looking nice. Clear is nice and dry. It's been hanging a little bit. I've been working on one guitar as the other one's doing something else, and it kind of keeps me busy and keeps things moving along so I can get to the next steps with everything else a little bit quicker. So instead of just sitting around watching TV, drinking beer, or whatever, uh, I'm constantly working on something. Now it's the devil's turn. It's hung long enough. This finish is really nice. There are no tape lines that you can feel whatsoever. There's a little bit of dust inside here and a little bit of orange peel, not much. So level sanding will get rid of that. I'm using 1500 grit sandpaper and I should be using like an 800 grit, but I want to cut this slow. And that's kind of what I do when I go into the buffing process because I don't have a lot of airs, runs or anything else that I get from spraying. Cutting it slow, I don't mind. Take your time. It comes out with a real nice finish afterwards. So I'll go with the 1500 to 2000, 2500, maybe 3000. 3000 makes it really easy to buff it out. You could basically buff it out by hand. Some people will go to next steps using 4000 and so on. I don't see a reason why you need to do that. So I like this 2K stuff. I like it a hell of a lot better than a lacquer. I've used the Stumac. Uh, nitro cellulose lacquer. I did a kick guitar with that. It was a red less ball and I kind of put that guitar through a little bit of a uh, climate change as far as temperature wise humidity and so on and wanted to see exactly what the lacquer would actually do and you know three coats of lacquer on there that's all you really need three coats of clear on something you don't have to flood it and, and you know dip it like I was doing with the epoxy resin making a real thick finish that can cause shit to start cracking and having some problems with it now the lacquer did exactly what I thought it was going to do it checked all over that body now I don't want that as far as me working on somebody else's guitar and if I use lacquer on there you know what is what's what is it going to do in the future is it going to crack is it going to chip is it going to do this polyurethane stuff is really really nice uh, we used to use it for painting cars we also used to use lacquer as well but it wasn't nitrosolios lacquer like you know they do with the guitars plus i don't have to worry about this and changing colors because nitro will end up yellowing out a little bit in time this will not do that and it's also kind of like water resistant uv resistant as well so that's what makes this kind of really really nice so enough chit chat and let me get into cutting this thing getting it all smoothed out so i got my foam rubber sanding block 1500 grit sandpaper that has been soaking over here for a while and let's start getting to town with this thing All right, so I'm going to dry off this top, let it sit so all the moisture evapor evaporates off of the top of here, and then check to see if I see any shiny spots. If, if I see any shiny spots, then that means I need to go over it again to remove those shiny spots before I go into the next sandpaper which will be for a while because I'm going to sand the whole body down first with the same sandpaper and then go into with the other sandpaper. This way I know that I'm sanding everything evenly and everything's getting, you know, it's all going in steps, not rushing and finishing one side and then going to the other side and finish the other side and then go to the sides of the body and finish them. You know, this is all going to get sanded down pretty much evenly from one sandpaper to the other. So I can kind of feel and see that I've got a couple of spots. Right here is a couple of spots where it's still a little shiny. The edges, you want to make sure you take care of those as well because 
well, it's part of the guitar. And I've seen Gibson do this a lot with their, and including Epiphone. Epiphone seems to do a little bit better of a job, though. Getting up close with the sanding to the neck and the body, uh, Epiphone seems to do a little bit better as far as wet sanding those areas and then polishing up really nice. Gibson, on the other hand, you can kind of see that it's like rippled a little bit. There's a little bit of orange peel on the edges over here, and that's not right. So I see a couple spots that I need to take care of as far as a little bit more wet sanding goes. But all in all, you know, it's going to come out really nice. So I'll be back. Hey, what's going on? So I've upgraded to the 2000 grit sandpaper from the 1500, and I'm going over the whole body. And what I'm doing is I'm removing the 1500 grit scratches with a 2000, then I will go over this with 2500 and remove the scratches from the 2000 and that'll give me a nice buffing surface. So everything is going really well with this thing. It's, it's really nice. No shiny spots, no, uh, all the orange peel is gone. No lines that you could feel. Now it's just time to do all the finishing work and, and get it to where it looks really nice, real shiny, real pretty. The one thing I do though is anytime I switch from one paper to another paper, I always change my water and start off with clean water. Saturate the paper, make sure the paper is saturated and you can kind of tell by the color of the paper that the, uh, it is really good and saturated. It's not as stiff as what it was before. Just taking wet sandpaper and dipping it in the water without letting it soak uh, actually is not right. If you end up doing that, uh, your scratches are different than what they would be if you let the paper soak. And this is something I learned with the automobile automotive uh, body work and shit. It's letting this stuff sit a little bit. And you can take a break, have a cigarette or whatever while your water is sitting and or your paper is sitting and this way you know it is completely saturated and it's going to do the job and do the job the way it's supposed to do it what it's meant to do and how it's meant to do it now one thing i like to do is i like to change out the water as you can see maybe you can see it i'm not too sure that there's a little bit of like a milky haze over the whole body that's the clear coat okay and that's okay but if you go too far, you sit in one spot too long while you're sanding, and you start seeing color coming through, and it makes a puddle of red or a puddle of black or something, well, then you have went too far, and you're past the clear coat into the finish. This is one of the reasons why I like to change out the water. I start off with fresh, clean water, and I could see and pay attention to everything a lot easier instead of having... Uh, water that's contaminated already has a color to it like the milkiness from the clear coat this just makes it a lot easier to pay attention to how much you're sanding and keeping it from going too far and again you know paying attention to this area here and this area here on both sides of the neck uh, like I said before Gibson and, and a few other companies they don't really look at that area even on their, their more expensive guitars there's still like a little bit of orange peel or something going on over there and the nice thing I like about these foam pads is that you know I put my finger on there but it's not pushing on the paper if you see that little opening right here you put your finger on that opening and you're not pushing pressure in that area like if you were here if you're putting your finger over here and pushing on it you're actually pushing pressure in that area and you could possibly make a line or a divot so i kind of like the way this foam pad is for sanding um you could pick these up at uh like harbor freight and shit now another good thing is it's not stiff like an actual sanding block is really stiff doesn't follow contours very easily and very well this is stiff but not stiff to where I can't make this edge around for the armrest and have it sanded nice and even without creating a flat spot in the clear coat so it's kind of nice it's not too loose not too stiff and it could still follow 
for contouring and still get a flat surface for sanding flat areas. Now all I'm doing is removing the 1500 grit scratches, smoothing things out a little bit more just to make it a lot easier for a lot easier for buffing. Now what I'm doing when I get to this edge here, I tilt the paper a little bit and kind of move away from it and then flatten it out because I don't want to have a divot over here as well. And I'm not just going like this with it, I'm actually just moving slowly a little bit at a time. So when you start going like this with it, it's your gliding over your finish not really cutting your finish and you can actually feel a difference as well when you're, when you're sanding. Alright so I'm going to finish this up and then move on to the 2500 grit and then start to buffing. Now the one thing I didn't ask the owner of this guitar was if he wanted the back of the neck to be smooth or if he wanted to have a gloss finish on it. Now I kind of know what he plays and, and how he plays and I think I'll probably leave it as a smooth finish on the back of this neck instead of polishing it out uh, because of the, the style that he plays, the type of music that he plays. And that'll make it easier for him and there'll still be a clear coat on the back of it and it'll still be polished out if he wants it polished out you know a little rubbing compound will take care of it might have to do a little bit of wet sanding with a uh, higher number sandpaper now one way to really see how your progress is all right now each stage of sandpaper is almost like polishing all right, I'm not going to say it is, but it's almost like polishing. So once the water dries and evaporates off the top of this, you can actually look at it at an angle and start seeing a, a somewhat of a reflection. And you can kind of see it now with the lighting over here. Uh, it's reflecting off of it because it, each sandpaper, each grid of sandpaper that, that's a higher number is a, uh, a very light grit and you're polishing your finish basically with each of the higher number sandpapers that you're using so when you're looking at it and you look at it at an angle and you can actually tell if you missed any spots uh by the glare or the reflection that you're somewhat getting on your surface so if i was sanding this whole area over here and i left this like with the 1500 you would see more of a somewhat of a reflection here and it will kind of be hazy more over here. So you can tell the difference, but you can't count on that difference to say, okay, well, you're done with the 2000 grit sandpaper and you can go to the next step. You can't count on that. You really have to look at it, feel it, and it should start feeling more softer, softer, and softer with the higher grit sandpaper that you're using. And that's what you're looking for. Now, when you see the glare inside it doesn't mean that okay you're ready to buff because when you start buffing you start seeing like real fine scratches in your finish that means that you didn't sit there and sand enough to where the sandpaper did its job and the rubbing compound is doing its job to polish out that finish those fine scratches are left from the sandpaper and that gives you a hazy look even though it's been polished even though you know you can look at it and it's got somewhat of a reflection on it it should be a mirror not just a reflection it should look like a mirror it should be really really glossy again black should look black not gray or hazed in this case here with this black hair because it has such a um a high like pearl effect in it uh, I wouldn't say flake, okay? This is not a, a paint that's got flake in it. This is pearl that's inside of this. I know uh, after I did the clear coating on there and hit the, with the light, a lot of people were saying about the flaking that are inside there. No, it's not a flake. This is a pearl. So, big difference in the two. 
even though you can get flake in different colors, pearl comes in different colors, and you can get like a variety of different type of pearls, blue pearl, white pearl. One of the things that we have here is we have a white pearl jar. Now, this is pearl, very expensive, it's pretty much full, but the pearl inside of here isn't really white. It's got purples, it's got blues, so depending on which way you hit it with the light, that's what this is going to do. So usually with flake, you usually have like a reflective metal piece that's inside the, the finish, micro, or maybe a little bit larger, kind of like the boat uh, the boat metal flake. I don't know if you've ever seen, you guys ever seen that, but some of these custom boats that are, uh, well, actually not custom boats, but some of these higher-end fishing boats will have a uh, real high glittery look to them that's that's a much bigger flake they kind of look cool and back in the 70s some of the guys used to take their their hot rods uh kind of like the gas uh gassers and they used to paint them with those colors because they would stick out a lot and you know you'd see them going down the, the uh, track real easily compared to a car that's just painted they'd stick out more you know basically This is a pearl, not a flake. So I just want to make sure that, you know, that's kind of clear up a little bit. On camera, it just looks glittery. But when you get it in, like, certain lights and move it around, you'll see, like, different colors. All right, so I'm going to finish this up with the 2000 before I go into the 25. I'm already seeing and I could feel that the top of this is pretty much done. Now it's time to get the edges and stuff. And again, I still do the edges the same way that I would do the edges freehand with any other guitar. Two fingers cup the sandpaper, wet it, and you use the two fingers, one on one side, one on the other side, and follow that con contour that is around the body, not leaving any flat spots, but yet still sanding it. And sanding it nice and smooth. All right, you guys, I will be back with the next grid of sandpaper, followed by buffing afterwards. All right, hold on. All right, so I'm back again. This time I am with another cup of clean water and a submerged 2,500 grit piece of sandpaper that's been sitting in there for approximately about 20 minutes now. I was watching a part of a movie, so... One thing I probably didn't mention when I was talking about the sandpaper and soaking and stuff, uh, wet sanding the water, making sure that the paper is fully saturated with water all throughout the paper backing and so forth, also makes the paper last a lot longer. So that's the one nice thing about wet sanding as well. And you could, I mean, as long as you're not sanding color and you know getting it all over the paper and stuff as well because sometimes it'll stay in the paper and then if you go sand something else with the same piece of paper you could transfer that color into the finish or whatever that you're using that paper for um for clear coats you could use or reuse recycle that paper as long as it still has a grit on it and it's still doing its job you could reuse it for something else but i won't i don't recommend it i actually throw away i throw away sandpaper i throw away sandpaper quite a bit i don't like to reuse sandpaper because it's it's contaminated now with this here i'm going to end up doing the edges first because I want a nice flat surface when I go to sand the top of this. You'll see why. Even though there isn't no sharp edges on this body other than the edges where the pickup is and a few other spots, 
there really isn't that sharp of an edge around the edges but it's going to kind of seem like it does after I get done wet sanding this you can see I don't stay in one spot too long and I kind of make sure that these rounded is sanded And even though the edges of this guitar, like the sides, are not fully, fully flat, I still use a block on them. Say she's ready for buffing. <laughs> 